Evo 2023 is this weekend, the largest fighting game tournament in the world and one that, no matter the game or the community, is almost guaranteed to spawn some incredible moments that fans will never forget. The NetherRealm community has seen its fair share of those moments across the years and across the different games. And seeing as this weekend is where we say goodbye to Mortal Kombat 11 and its final tournament before Mortal Kombat 1, we set up for a new chapter in the competitive history books. I thought, why not revisit some of these moments to really get the ball rolling for EVO this weekend? We are Ketchup and Mustard, and these are five unforgettable moments from Evolution and Netherrealm games. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, why not subscribe and stick around for more content to come? We'd definitely appreciate it. Starting off with an old faithful, it's Sonic Fox vs. a Foxy Grandpa, where the Fox finish was first seen in Mortal Kombat X. EVO 2015 was, at the time, the largest Mortal Kombat tournament in history. 1,200 unique signups, but only one possible champion. In the end, it came down to Sonic Fox vs. a Foxy Grandpa, and that bracket was stacked so you'd better believe that reaching Grand Finals was no easy task. A simple situation here, Foxy was on the winner's side of the bracket having not lost until this series, and Sonic Fox was sent to losers earlier in the tournament, having to fight for their life all the way up until the final series. This meant that if Fox wanted to win the tournament, they would first have to reset the bracket against Foxy by winning the first three out of five. And in that series, we had a total back and forth. A battle of variation and character changes after almost every match. It was Tempest versus Royal Storm for the first few. After game three, Foxy switches to Buzzsaw. And then when the Buzzsaw is successful, the next game Fox will switch to Aaron Black. After that, a bracket reset is obtained, and we started again. After the reset, the series was all Sonic Fox. But what stands out here is how the championship ended. Foxy had barely any life remaining. A comeback was somewhat in the works, and... Caltrops. The guaranteed damage from stepping on these for even a second was enough to win the entire thing. And here, it would eventually be called the Fox Finish, being seen in various in-game achievements in the future. Fun fact, Foxy would get revenge many years later in Mortal Kombat 11, using Robocop's spikes to eliminate Fox in the exact same fashion. And once again, it was Evo. Funny how things like that work out, but all of it was one big memorable moment. Injustice 2 has had quite a few memorable moments for being at EVO for just two years, but I think the one that stands out the most is Honeybee vs Theo at EVO 2017. That year for Injustice 2 was a tough tournament, and with Injustice 2 being so new and so different to MKX, you of course saw some players return for it, having more experience in Injustice than they did in Mortal Kombat. One of those players was definitely Theo, who is by all accounts an Injustice legend, held in the highest regard and was in both games one of the most talented players in the business. Going up against him was Honeybee, who if you've watched Mortal Kombat tournament play for MK11, you'll know that he's a super talented Devorah player from both X and 11. But did you know he actually started his career as a Flash player in the original Injustice? Well, let me tell you that this was his moment. And to this day, I feel like Honeybee would still consider this his greatest moment on stream. But of course, maybe he'll tell you different. It's losers finals, which means it's the top three position. Only one player can move on to grand finals to face off against Dragon, who was waiting for them. The other player is eliminated. Both of them have two games each at this point, so this match is the only one that decides a winner. Honeybee is off to a great start, but it's swiftly turned around by Theo, who always seemed to prefer ranged characters with neutral control. Neutral and fundamentals, that was Theo's entire deal with Injustice. Now, Honeybee's Flash was all about the more ridiculous mix-ups and reactions. High pace. And those mix-ups would result in a wonderful moment. I'm not going to spoil what happens, just watch for yourself. 
Theo doesn't care. He does have access to a clash. However, Theo won't be looking Hold for it. Hold on now, Honey B. Can he, he kill with this combo? He might be able to. Let's see what he gets. The reset. Oh! He commits to it. No guess. The overhand into the super and Honey B with all the energy of the... Moments like these are special on the most regular of days, but when they happen at the biggest tournament of your life, it is another story entirely. Mortal Kombat X returned to EVO in 2016, and there was a whole list of new stories to pay attention to. The biggest one for that year, in my opinion, was definitely the worldwide debut of Tekken Master, who at this point is a household name in competitive Mortal Kombat, but back then, at that time, only a few people actually knew who this mysterious Mortal Kombat player was. You see, we had seen Tekken Master a ton before EVO, as he was a dominant player in the European Mortal Kombat Cup, something that Mustard and myself were commentating a great deal. Now, Tekken Master was a complete rival to both a Foxy Grandpa and Madsen, as the three of them would clash in top eights all the time. The thing about this was, it seems that many North American players did not watch those events, and such didn't actually know who Tekken Master was. Well, they certainly had a wake-up call that year as Tekken Master made it all the way to Grand Finals and had to defeat many MKX legends to reach that point. Sonic Fox was the final challenge. I have to state that Sonic Fox was at this time on a complete rampage in Mortal Kombat X. The competition was fierce, but the absolute number one spot was always there for Fox due to their diverse list of characters. In this event, Tekken Master would shock the community and achieve a bracket reset. What cracks me up even to this day is that little smile that Tekken Master does when the hat comes off. It's great. Ultimately, Tekken Master placed second at EVO that year, with Sonic Fox taking first. But seeing Fox pushed to the limit like this, this much at the height of their dominance, it was certainly one to remember. And a single event that pushed Tekken Master into a player that everyone had heard of after EVO 2016. Definitely our most modern entry, and one that may even expand merely this week. It is Rewind vs. the Twins from Chile, Nicholas and Scorpion Prox. The last couple of years have been unbelievable for new developments with competitive MK11 players. The most iconic of the current story for me is that two twins from Chile finally started to attend some North American majors, and they've absolutely crushed their way into grand finals most of the time. Scorpion Prox and Nicholas are some of the younger players we have in the space, and many people online have said stuff like, well, if they're so good, why weren't they around when MK11 started? Look, I'm pretty sure they were in school or something, so that's not really an argument that you can make. The only thing that matters is that now they're playing, now they're competing, and now they're winning everything. What we do know is that players have rarely been able to defeat one of the twins, let alone both of them in the same event. And that is where Rewind comes in. No stranger to EVO competition, as Rewind is actually an EVO champion for Injustice 2, Rewind last year was the final North American standing with Scorpion Prox and Nicholas in his path. The set in question is Losers Finals, where a legendary Kotal Khan performance allowed Rewind to make it into Grand Finals, with the entire venue's support on his back. It has to be stated just how ridiculously hard this must be to defeat just one of the twins. They play like robots, perfect flawless blocks, perfect movement, the most ridiculous combo optimization, and a massive roster of potential characters. They will always pick themselves favorably in a match with the right matchup, the right situation, and even if you can defeat one of them, a second player lies in wait with almost an identical playstyle. The endurance a player needs to have to pull this off is something I'm not sure most players are even able to do right now, but that's what this EVO could change. It is Mortal Kombat 11's last chance, after all. And finally, what I consider to be one of the most standout performances of all EVO, it's Perfect Legend and the back-to-back -back EVO victories in 2011 and 2012. Mortal Kombat 9 was not only a new game, but the birth of a worldwide community. 
Yes, I know, some parts of the world did play classic Mortal Kombat, and North America over the years had various forum communities with online play, but if we're talking a worldwide scene starting at the same time, that is where Mortal Kombat 9 came in. The very first Evo for MK9 was a demonstration of where things could go from here. Who was the most practiced and tournament ready in a brand new game with no competitive legacy, and only a small amount of events to really get yourself ready for? It was a total free-for-all, but in 2011, Perfect Legend, a legendary Dead or Alive player, took the gold and went all the way with his Kung Lao performance, defeating Ryo in Grand Finals. This was a huge achievement anyway, but what's more interesting is what happened after that EVO. Now, for various reasons, and truthfully, it was a very long time ago, so I'm absolutely not going to speak on behalf of anyone, Perfect Legends took quite a large amount of time away from the game. It happens sometimes, players aren't exactly obliged to stick with something 24-7. Sometimes things change and you may not have the time to play, maybe responsibilities shift. I don't know. It's not important in this video because it's all about what happened the next year in the next EVO. At this time in 2012, Perfect Legend was back, still playing Kung Lao, and in Grand Finals was up against CD Jr., who at this time was more present in the tournament space, so you definitely had this amazing story of a returning champion looking to reclaim that top spot, and the current player who some players were definitely expecting to see take the event all the way. Well, in a absolutely amazing performance with Kung Lao, Perfect Legend takes it all the way and wins both major MK9 EVOs back to back. Now, this wasn't the end of MK9 at EVO, but during the absolute prime time of the game and with so much story going into both years, this performance is one that will always stay in the history books of Mortal Kombat 9. And that's my list of five memorable EVO moments for NetherRealm games. EVO 2023 is this weekend, so definitely tune into that for all kinds of games. I personally cannot wait to see how Mortal Kombat 11 ends and let us set up for a new chapter in the history books with Mortal Kombat 1. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.